and welcome to another auto lore video. It has been a while since I last uploaded a video about my car ownership, but the time has finally come now that I've added yet another one to my fleet. Meet my new daily driver for the winter, arguably the best and most iconic car that has ever come out of Scandinavia, the 1986 Volvo 245 wagon with a modest 382,000 kilometers. Yes, it is a bit broken and rough around the edges, but in true Volvo 240 fashion it just keeps running and running despite having traveled the entire distance to the moon, and is 35 years old. Some of you might think that I am out of my mind, but to me it makes the perfect daily driver to brave the harsh Swedish winter climate. More on that in a moment. So how much did I pay for this old family workhorse, you might ask? $3800, and while some of you might think that I overpaid for it, I personally think it was quite reasonable. I have been looking to find the right example for many months now, and although there are still many for sale in Sweden since it was produced in such large volumes, the truth is that many of these have not had the easiest lives. This model, along with other old Volvos, have for many many years been used as fun beater cars because they are cheap, rear wheel drive, reliable and easy to repair. There is a huge enthusiast following in Sweden for these Volvos, especially among the younger, and for that reason many of them have either been heavily modified or destroyed, similar to what has happened to classic BMWs and Mercedes Benzes. This combined with rust and the fact that they are in such general high demand makes it difficult to find the right car in the right condition, and when you do, they are either sold within hours or priced as collectibles. It's not uncommon to see these selling for $10,000 or more these days. This particular example ticked all of the boxes for me. First of all, it has managed to avoid rust well since it has spent its entire life in the far north of Sweden, where the roads are free from salt, so the chassis has many years of life left in it. At the same time, it is not in such good condition that I have to feel guilty about driving it in the winter. It does have rust in some areas, such as the tailgate, a very common area to rust on the 245, but I have seen far worse. The other problem areas are virtually rust free or have been repaired already. Just look at the wheel arches, they almost look like new. Secondly, I wanted the car to be in original condition and not heavily modified like many of these are. I wanted an authentic Volvo 245 driving experience. While I respect everyone's taste, I personally don't think lowered suspension, loud exhaust, engine swaps and big turbos suit this car very well. But this is only my own opinion, to each their own, of course. With this being said, it is not completely free from cosmetic modifications. It has the GLT trim package look, which includes blacked out exterior trim instead of chrome, black pinstriping along the sides of the car, and 15 inch alloy wheels found on the GLT turbo model. Mine is actually the DL trim level, but I can live with this styling mod since it was a standard factory option. I'm honestly not a massive fan of the blacked out trim and might do something about it in the future, but I like the look of the wheels. And on the topic of equipment and mods, mine also has a glass sunroof that is quite unusual, and a retrofitted rev counter as it did not come as standard in the gauge cluster on most Volvo 240s. I also wanted an example that was in good mechanical condition, well maintained and recently having passed its annual technical inspection. It did not come with any service history, but I was giving a long list of a slew of important items that have been replaced before it was sold by the dealership. This one is in Swedish, so let me translate it for you. New distributor cap and rotor, new spark plug cables, new ignition contact breaker points, new timing belt, new entry mount left side, new oil and filter, new air filter, new clutch, new reflectors, four new front brake lines and new brake fluid, new rear brake pads, new parking brake components including shoes, new ball joint front left, new control arm bushing front left, new license plates, and finally, new exhaust components. The cost of parts and labor alone for this kind of service would have easily exceeded $2,000 if not more. This made asking price much more appealing, and in my opinion quite fair given the market of the Volvo 240. Now, why was I so eager to buy a Volvo 245, and why do I think it makes the perfect Scandinavian winter daily driver? Well, there are many reasons for it really. The first one is the nostalgia factor. Back in my childhood the Volvo 240 was very common and it always caught my eye. There was a family in my neighborhood that I lived in who owned a white 245 wagon, and as I've grown older I've always lusted for one in that spec. As odd as it might sound, it has always been one of my dream cars to own. It might not be the most beautiful car out there, but there is something about the squared brick on wheel styling that is so unique and quirky. The second reason is the 240's venerable reputation. Not only is it an icon that perfectly reflects Swedish culture, 
but it is also a feat of automotive engineering and arguably one of the best cars of all time. Its bulletproof reliability, practicality, robustness, crash safety. I could go on forever about what makes the Volvo 240 so good, but it is undeniable that it's an objectively great car, even if it's not the most exciting. The third reason is that I've always wanted to experience what classic Volvo ownership experience is like, and whether driving such an archaic car daily can be trouble-free and uncomplicated. As I like my ownership to be a bit dramatic for cheaper cars like these, I decided to buy an older high mileage example that also has a carburetor instead of fuel injection. This is why the 1986 model year was perfect for me, and it does make it more eventful to cold start it on cold winter mornings. <laughs> This one has the carbureted 2.3 liter B23A red block engine with a 5 speed manual transmission and manual choke. It produces 112 horsepower and 187 newton meters of torque. 0 to 100 km per hour is 13 seconds with a top speed of 170 km per hour. Not exactly performance to brag about, but it is a relatively light car at only around 1.3 tons. It is sluggish but actually adequate for regular daily driving around the city. And to my surprise, the engine in my 245 looks well kept and immaculate, unusual for a car with this mileage. However, what's not so good about my engine is that it idles at very high revs, not to mention the grinding noise coming from my clutch that I can best describe as gears grinding against each other. As you can imagine, this makes the cabin noise very loud, you almost need hearing protection when driving this car. Now, the fourth and perhaps primary reason why I bought this car is the financial aspect of it. As you can imagine, a Volvo 245 is very welcoming after owning two very expensive W140 Mercedes S-Classes, one of which has a V12. Also a North Star Cadillac, a BMW and an unreliable Italian car, all at the same time. Let's call it downsizing and becoming a minimalist to recover from this financial devastation I've suffered the past few years. Or I'm simply becoming old and more frugal. Nevertheless, not only is it a cheap car to own due to good and cheap parts availability, it is also easy to work on, which does help save labor costs. Also, since it's a vehicle older than 30 years, it is considered a veteran vehicle in Sweden. This means that it is completely exempt from road taxes and only needs to pass vehicle inspection every second year, so I can legally drive it until late 2023. For free. Unless... it breaks down, of course. So the only real running cost will be insurance, which is also cheap for this model, and fuel, which is not so cheap as old Volvos are thirsty and the gas prices are soaring right now. Still, I can't think of many other cars that are more economical to own than a Volvo 240. So why do I think the Volvo 245 will make a good winter daily driver? Well, rear wheel drive would perhaps be the most obvious answer, even if it's of course not the safest on slippery roads since it has no basic driving aids. No power steering, no anti-lock brakes and no traction control. One could argue that it's a death trap on wheels, but thankfully it's a Volvo. And I think that is part of the charm, the fact that everything is so analog and far less forgiving if you drive it carelessly. But it's also because of the reasons I highlighted before, the cheap running costs and that it's such a rugged and seemingly indestructible car, proven to be able to handle these extreme conditions and conquer any challenge thrown at it. I don't have to be afraid of damaging it either, because it is already not perfect. It has stings, it has scratches, and that gives me peace of mind during a season that is known to be rough on our cars. I think a bit of patina is part of this model's identity. It is designed to be heavy duty, to be a workhorse. And speaking of being a workhorse, the practicality is also a huge reason why it makes such a good daily driver. The cargo space is seriously impressive with the rear seats folded, and it can virtually store anything you want to. Be it furniture after a trip to Ikea, building materials, Christmas trees, anything really. You can even make it a living space if you wanted to, a camper vehicle. The possibilities are endless and it makes it very versatile.
So that wraps up the introduction to my new Old Winter Daily. I hope you enjoyed it. In the next video of the series I will go through everything that is wrong with the Volvo 245. Even if it's perfectly drivable and dependable right now, I can assure you that it's far from sorted. Feel free to give me suggestions on what kind of videos of this car that you would like to see. And of course, consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more classic Volvo content. More videos to come soon. Until next time, see you soon.